What's up, it's the Kid 50 Cent. Welcome to BET Official right here. We're gonna get a chance to give you a close look at the actual soundtrack for Get Rich or Die Trying to Film. I worked on it hard. I actually got a chance to record music for the soundtrack while shooting the film. And I work with everybody in my camp from Lloyd Banks, to Young Buck, Tony Ayo, to the first lady of G-Unit Records, Olivia, Marv D, MOP. I even had the opportunity of working with Mace on the soundtrack. You're really gonna enjoy it. You're gonna get a close look at us behind the scenes. I've always been like a Marv D fan, you know, and it's just, the timing was so good. Like, it was it was a blessing to have them. Have did a song with Fifth called Bump That. I mean, uh, for, for a project that Hav was working on. And uh, this was before he was with Shady, Aftermath, and all that. Yeah, I was working on my solo album that time. Uh, so before Fifth got his deal, Hav was like, yo, I'm feeling that kid, I wanna do a song with him, you know what I mean? So he came, he did the song, you know what I mean? And that's where like the real relationship started right there. They was with a company that really much didn't know how to market them properly. And it was a great situation for me, because it's an opportunity for me to, to make a deal with them and bring them over and allow them to see, because they're experienced artists, like they've been around, the veterans. We were already like established, you know what I mean? Since like, like the early 90s, you know what I mean? So. We was kids back then when we first started. I mean, it was like 14, 15 when we first came out. I don't have to stand over their shoulders to make anything happen. With new artists, I kind of sit there and I work with them until we find that lane, you know, where they're comfortable and it's different from everything else that we released to this point. So, Marv D's project, I was really excited about that. When we all got together and collaborated, it was like, it was a real smooth, easy transition. You know what I'm saying? He make you feel comfortable. You know what I mean? We be kicking it like we on the block. It ain't like you talking to some big record exec and they like, okay, we gonna do this, we gonna ain't do that. make an appointment. You, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you don't gotta make no appointments. You call them directly. It's just like chilling with your people, you know what I'm saying? I couldn't even ask for a better situation. Out of control, actually, I started my portion, of, I recorded my portion of Out of Control in Los Angeles, you know, with Dr. Dre. That actually was like one of the first records that we did before we even signed to G-Unit, you know what I'm saying? Like, we was going back and forth, you know what I'm saying, talking to Fifth, and then we knew in our heads that, all right, this is what we are gonna do. So Fifth would send us songs, and then that was like, the like number one and number two song that he sent to us, and we just did it, mp 3 it back. I heard it, and I was like, yo, this gotta be the single off the re-release. You know, it makes the most sense to me, because it was an opportunity for, for them to see how, how well we'll work together. We recorded, while I was still on the movie set. They had, they, they sent me files that they that they worked through Pro Tools and we'd send on the internet and I would record my verse in Toronto while they was in New York. A couple of weeks later, he was like, yeah, we doing a video of this right here, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and we was like, hey, let's do it. And we recorded over 30 records. So there's 30, 50 cent Marv Deep records that exist and then we take maybe four or five of them out of those 30, the best five, and then they'll continue to create the rest of the music for their actual albums. The new album, you just see like Marv Deep at their full potential, you know what I mean? We, we're not changing our style or, or like the science of how, we'll, how we make our music, so we're sticking to that formula, you know what I mean? The only thing different now is we got more marketing dollars, more promotion dollars to get our music out there to the world, you know what I mean? And another difference is we, you know what I mean, we got a bigger camp now, we got, the G unit down with us now, you know what I mean? So we're gonna have songs with G unit members on the album, you know what I mean? That's the only real difference. For me, the importance of signing groups like Mob Deep or MOP to G unit is it's, the, it's what 50 Cent is to Shady. You know, like you gotta find the next project. The next thing is there is um that has the that can possibly be the that, that thing that, that takes off, because it hasn't actually been on the right format for them to be seen in the right light. Like, because their content, my content matches up some ways, there's certain things that I do that, when it comes time for me to release an actual single, that they haven't been able to execute, that I can show them that makes their project more acceptable to the general public. The album is, man, I, I'm gonna take it, up here with this one, you know what I'm saying? And, and that's not just me talking. Every artist, they come out and say, oh, this is, my new one is better than whatever. And then when they come out, they say, well, you know, I was, 
You know, I was kind of like in my own zone. I wasn't feeling like myself and make excuses. No, this is no excuses on this one. This is going definitely. Actually, I got material that leaked out from the, you know, the preparation of uh, the records that I had. And um, so I, it just keeps me on my toes. And, you know, realistically, a lot of the records wouldn't have been used anyway, because I ended up picking from about 60, 70 records. And um, the album is going to be bananas, man. I just hope that everybody embraces it the way I, I feel they should, you know what I'm saying? And I actually wrote most of my successful radio records in overseas, you know what I'm saying? Um, I, I made a lot in London, I made some in Amsterdam, I think I made some in France. I made some last night, as a matter of fact, I did four records last night. For some reason, my my way of thinking is a little bit more broader, you know what I'm saying? Because you look out your window, you might see a monument that you've seen on TV years ago and now you're actually right in front of it, you know what I'm saying? So it just makes you more aware of your surroundings and the people. You know, you pick up little things, you know, and I made uh, On Fire overseas. I made I'm So Fly overseas. I made um, Playboy overseas. We made Stunt 101 overseas. I made uh, Karma overseas. Like all my big records I've made with an open mind, you know, just being able to, I wrote Warrior over here, 20 minutes. They just come out real fast, and I got a bulk of CDs in my in my suitcase now that I go through, and um, I'm probably gonna leave here with about 20 records. I already got 14 done since we came on the tour, so I'll probably end up leaving with 20, and then go back home to my studio. I record, no, no, we don't got a studio bus out here, but every once in a while we get to the right place, and they have a studio there. We go there, and it's like clashing because everybody got so much, you know, material to put down, and I just wait for everybody to leave, and then I go do my thing, and then. Knock him out. Banks is, Banks is like my protege. Yeah, like he's the, actually the youngest member of Gina. Yeah, he don't look like it though. We see his face and be like, oh man, the hood will do that to you. The <laughs> make you look like you start aging faster. So much stuff going on around you. I was always a little more mature than my age. You know what I'm saying? So people might not see the, the growth that I did, but I could see it myself. You know what I'm saying? And me just being comfortable in front of the camera and not on stage and being a performer has a lot to do with how, how successful you are like in the game because sometimes people want to see you up close and when you disappoint them they not going to go buy another or another ticket to your show tony actually brought him to my attention tony ayo brought banks to my attention and when i sat with him he uh he had only rapped on a mixtape one time and it was a the, the mixtape was so local that nobody had ever heard of him. And I committed to the project and worked it from that, from nobody knowing him to him being a double platinum selling artist in solo effort. Sold 536,000 copies the first week. You know, so that's a huge accomplishment. He debuted number one when he came. Everybody changes the environment. See, when we first started, he wouldn't say anything outside of his verse. Not even like talk at the end, say anything. He was first, that's it. And he swore to God he was better than all of us. Like he would sit there like, after he was done, like he was just better than everybody. In 97 when I was working with Jay, if I had to go somewhere to perform something, I would take him with me. You know, he would come with me and perform with me on stage and stuff. Like he's the kind of guy that he can, Rock the crowd without his records. 50 was really in the street. I've been rapping since I was like 15. You know, 50 was in the street thing real heavy. You know, he had a Benz when he was like 18. So, you know, he ran into Jim Master J. Jim Master J actually thought 50 was a rapper, mm -hmm. but he wasn't. Then, you know, Jim Master J showed 50 how to rap. Basically, from there, you know, that situation didn't work out. Rest in peace to Jim Master J, though. Definitely. And um, he went to um, Columbia. Okay. And then from Columbia, what happened was he was dealing with Tony Pope. They really wasn't paying me too much mind because they was. <laughs> yeah, I'll be dropping diamonds. He dropped, he dropped that. Anything he dropped, you can keep. You can keep that here. <laughs> finish, finish the story, guys. Yeah, finish the story. He went to um, Tony Pope. Okay. You know he was he was going hard, doing crazy records. We actually went on tour a long time ago. All right. Me and Fifty. So I was at a young age touring with Fifty. And then from there, you know, 50 got shot nine times. He got dropped off the label. Then we took it to the streets, the mixtapes. Bootleggers in the radio made us, you know? There it is, there it is. 
And now y'all celebrating real big G units everywhere. Well, you yep. see, I'm celebrating. Dude. I, I see, what, that's crazy. It's about 120,000 right here. Thank you, 50. <laughs> yeah, you got me rich now. So. And I loved it before that. We could be broke right now, you know what I'm saying? And I'll still be with 50, no matter what. But all you rappers, stop hating, man. If you want to get to 50, you got to come through me, man. For real, that's the general right there. He was around the whole time. He experienced when things was going up for me for a moment while he was on Columbia. Then I got shot. His phone stopped ringing. And so he kind of realized that Everybody was calling him to be on a mixtape or wanted him to be around. Pretty much wanted him to be around because of the momentum that was that was coming from me being on Columbia at the time after How the Raw came out. And then when I came back around, he had kind of tuned everybody else out. Like he was wasn't interested in having those relationships anymore. And we we just worked our way to here. Too many chiefs, not enough Indians, man. For real, follow suit, man. Tell them. And you get blingy like this. See, I love being an Indian. See, ain't nothing wrong with being an Indian to me if you living like this. You know what I'm saying? It's all good. You know what I mean? 50 always said it was going to happen, and it happened. And now we shoot my video, Seductive. To have Yayo back in the picture is great for me. Like, it feels like, you know, and they, they all feel like my little brothers. Everybody head is just getting big because we reading the sound scan. You know, 50s. Up there with the Beatles and Buck is platinum, Banks is platinum, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people used to be like, yo, they didn't know exactly my position. I, I think a lot of people would think that uh, I was like a fill-in, because I kind of came aboard when Yayo's incarceration kind of like was about. And, um, you know, I felt his goneness too, because I knew Yayo prior to his incarceration. Because right now, 50 stuck on me. He, he loved my album, Thoughts of a Predicate Felon. So, you know, Seductive is a crazy, Club record. Remember in the beginning of the candy shop, I said so seductive, right? That's because this record had already burnt into my brain from listening to this. You know what I mean? And now the candy shop, they're gonna hear originally why I said that the opening statement on candy shop came from me listening to this record so much while I was creating my new records. And it's just time for this record to come out now. It's Yayo. It's time to all Tony Yayo now. Yayo's home. So don't ask me about the bracelet 50 bucks, huh? <laughs> don't ask me about that. Other rappers don't get mad. 50 got me right, huh? I got to care when we went to jail. He got paid for all of the shows that we did on Rock the Mic. All the performances, he got paid. He put his money on the side, so half the taxes when he came from jail, he already had a million dollars. I had a lot of support from my boy 50, that's why I love him so much. When I was locked up, Banks, Buck, M, nobody forgot about me. Like, he, he gets excited my own boy. when Buck comes on TV. Yo, look. I'm doing my thing right now. I'm doing my thing. I'm doing my thing. Thoughts of a predicate felon. I got a DVD. Every time I went in and out of jail, they had cameras there. So I got a lot of ill footage you can see of my life, my harsh realities of my yeah. life. And you know, I had problems with parole and stuff like that. We just thinking them out. So shout to parole, fed probation. So now it's pushed back to August 30th. But everything's cool now. Though. Yeah, they're letting them travel. So y'all get a chance to see them out on yeah. the tour. Thank you. All right. I'm glad I caught up on my man because he's shooting a multi-million dollar movie right now. Yeah, I'll be busy. I'm in, I just flew back from Toronto, Canada. I want to miss this. But not, you know I saved the best for last, right? Save the best for last. Yeah, my album's a classic. My first single's productive. I'm excited. This is my first video. It's real, real, real big. It's doing it real big. In some places I've been outside the country, they've, they said I support gun culture because I'm so closely associated with gun violence because I've been shot nine times, you know, and last I remember, I ain't never had any gun conviction. I don't see how I support gun culture. I mean, there's standards that are placed on music as an art form that aren't placed on any other forms of entertainment, and it's obvious. When I put out the, the mask, I put an image in it where it's like I got a shotgun and it's like a wall of guns behind me. That, those actual images, I got the image from Born Identity. The film Born Identity is exactly the same photograph. But when they see me do it, it's supporting gun culture. When the action film has it, it it's overlooked. Right, shoot a jump shot in my basketball court in my backyard.
When did you like to be me? Oh, oh, and then what? Oh, and then what? Yeah. I had a raw chest on my basketball court in my backyard. Wouldn't you like to be me? Huh? I'm gonna hit this. Shoot the two. I got talent. I can't shoot That's me. when there ain't no money on the line. That was footage from the barbecue right there. Oh, man, it was crazy, man. We had a good time out there, man. I'm glad we put it on tape so y'all get a chance to experience what it with us. You know what I mean? But check this out right here, right? We're gonna get into some more footage off the DVD. It's the kid 50 Cent, you're watching Access Grand BT. G, you nick, you nick. Damn, baby, all I need is a little bit. This is day two. We at the airport, and when she be coming off the airplane with the girls, definitely gonna be high. It's gonna be major. Major. I got, when we predict now, I predict number one. I'm number one. Number two and number three. You, you look at Billboard? I look at Billboard. It feels my confidence. The sounds good, like all of it, I, I gotta pay close attention to it because I can't take anyone else's word for it. If I fail, I, I don't mind failing. I mind failing when I'm not going after what I feel. Like, I gotta know so I can make a decision based a knowledgeable decision, not just saying, okay, it's A, B, C, okay, I'm gonna pick B all the way down the line. Some of them gotta be B. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I'm not trying to do that. I wanna go make a, a real good decision. So I absorb all the information I have to do, you know, like I spend time in different areas and in the scope as a company, I make relationships and communicate with people in new media that kind of control the internet exposure and in the retail area, you know, so the better future. So I, I meet with pretty much everybody from different divisions from product management area to publicists, all of it. Get Rich or Die Trying, that movie totally exceeded my expectations. Like, seriously, I was very, very um, enamored by his presentation. You're like a god to son. I am God. My character name is Marcus Grant, you know, and the difference between Marcus Grant and Curtis Jackson is it's, it's a huge difference, you know, like I'm from Queens, he's from the Bronx. You know, we got similar age brackets. He's two years younger than me, actually, he's 28 years old. How much did you have to like study for this for this role and doing the whole acting thing? How, how crazy and bananas were Well, it was. I prepared for this role for three months before I actually got out there, and then it was two weeks that we rehearsed with the entire cast. Joy Bryant, Terrence Howard, um, Omar Miller, yeah. Tori Kittles. All right, so Bill Duke. <laughs> <laughs> the cast is crazy, huh? Yeah. Show no love. Love will get you killed. I knew it was gonna be good because I would catch him off and on, you know, while we was touring or while we were doing whatever, and he'd be talking to himself. I'd be like, yo, what are you doing? But he was practicing. You the boss, Marcus? Yeah. So what do you do? I'm a gangster. <laughs> <laughs> My best friend was a guy. His name was Charles Pringle. He lived across the street from me. Marcus's best friend is a female. You know, the story was kind of changed around. See, who, Charlene's character, my best friend, his name was Charles Pringle. His sister name was Charlene Pringle. So from the information that Terry compiled, he altered my life story to make it, to put the actual relationship into the story from the beginning. And he made my best friend be Charlene my best friend's sister. Voice don't sound the same. It's better. It's got more pain in it. A certain character in the movies, they, they portray people that I know, you know what I'm saying? I can be like, oh, I know who that is, or yo, I know who that is. It's, it's kind of crazy. For this to be my first film, like, I would say that I'm conditioned for music more, you know? So it was a bigger learning experience for me, being on a film set, you know? And I, it was the first time that I sat still in three years. You know, like, I've been from city to city or from state to state in the U.S., and um, I sat on the movie set for three and a half months in Toronto, Canada, and then 
But as soon as they said cut, I went to the trailer to make music. And as soon as they said we had a day off, I flew back to the US to do things you know, that I had to do on the music end of things, because I didn't want to be totally missing. I got a chance to see it firsthand. It's incredible. Man. A lot of people don't realize that I actually take a pay cut to do this film because I have an album, the largest selling album this year, and I could have been touring those three months, which would have generated more finances than I received from making a film, but it, it opens up a new door and a new avenue for me to go creatively. The movie's crazy, y'all, so it's definitely gonna be worth every bit of your money that you spend to go see it. Terrence Howard was great, Joy was great, everybody was great. Doing the movie and the soundtrack at the same time was difficult to balance because I just, I created material for the film. Like there's, there's verses and there's music that plays during the film that aren't really relevant to today's life. So I mean like, I don't think the consumer is interested in 50 Cent's writing in character as Marcus. They want to hear new music from 50 Cent. This soundtrack is, is something really serious. Everybody's on it from, you know, the new guys, M.O.P., Mob Deep, of course, Yayo yeah, Banks, Buck, 50 and Scope Scent, me, um, Eminem, favorite white boy in the world. For the music that I wrote inside the film, I concentrated on that, I got that out of the way, and then I started creating music that I would release right now, you know, for myself as an artist. So, so the soundtrack to me is should have the same anticipation as a 50 Cent album. Cause there's eight cuts with me by myself and then there's me with everybody else. Like I treat every record like it's a hit. Like when I leave out the studio, I feel like, yo, this is the one. You know what I'm saying? So it's not a, a fact of being selective with my records and what I give to the soundtrack or what I keep for myself. You know what I'm saying? Because that's the same setup that I had with Beg For Mercy. It's gonna allow people to get a little taste of Banks again before I actually hit them in the head. Everybody put together new material. Everybody collaborated on it. You're gonna see me and 50 on it again. You're gonna see Yayo with a few people. It's hot. Straight up, man, it's, it's, a, it's a record, man. Well, it's an album, but it's a record that I did on the album that's a real key record towards the movie. It was, um, I think it's a spot in the movie where 50 was reciting the chorus of one of the records that I have on the album that I think is gonna be a real popular record. But the soundtrack is pretty much, to me, it's almost like a G-Unit album, you know, and it's with, the, with the expansion, you know, to M.O.P., Mob Deep and Olivia, you know what I'm saying? And it's just all of us almost, you get a collective, you hear records. The first single is Hustle's Ambition, you know, and I'm excited about that record because the content is a little, is edgy, you know? It's more like the original music that I was writing. And it's because I, I didn't have radio as an option. I was writing music that would impact in the environment that I was in, that they would directly understand and ID with it immediately. And Hustle's Ambition is pretty much what me and my lifestyle is about. Like it's the ambition to move to the next level. I just want to take this time out to say, just say no to drugs. Now that I ain't got to sell it no more. <laughs> For a large portion of my uh, decision to write music for a life opposed to doing the things I was doing that was negative ahead of that was my son, you know? And as, after I had him, I knew that there would be nobody there to take care of him but me, pretty much, you know? And I, I didn't have a relationship with my father, so I didn't want that for my son, you know? And I had to try and do something different, so I started writing music full time in 97. I worked with Jam Master J. And I didn't receive anything when I signed the contract with Jam Master J, but it was a huge learning experience. I learned my song structure, everything I know about writing, I learned there. And then, because his touring schedule became so hectic with Run DMC, I had to move forward without him, and I ended up working with Corey Rooney, and I signed a deal to Track Masters and Columbia Records. The difference between the book and the film is a huge difference. Like, the book has direct information about me, you know, about my upbringing ahead of having the opportunity to write music for a living. And um, the film, again, has been altered to be entertaining cinematically, you know, so the book is interesting to me. I read it and to have it, for me, is I'm trying to draw my audience closer to me, you know, because I feel like the more that they know about me, the more they'll understand me and can appreciate the things that I write and say, because the things that you say in music aren't who you are. People take that for it, it being exactly who you are, but it does 
it is representation of your character. You know, how far you'll go, what you're willing to say. Banks is like, he's, he's finding new comfort zones. See, when we first started, he wouldn't say anything outside of his verse. Not even like talk at the end, say anything. He was verse, that's it. Every time we put material out, they would say new 50 Cent. They wouldn't even not acknowledge him, his name, or that he was even on the freestyles with me. They would say new 50 Cent, but it would be me, Banks, and Tony Ayo. You know, and the opportunity, I kind of carried it over and I made sure that they didn't mistake them as my sidekicks. So right after my first album, we sold 11 million records. You know, Interscope wanted another album from me right away. Like, and I was like, no, I wanted to do Beg for Mercy and then The Hunger for More, Lloyd Banks solo and Straight Outta Cash with a Young Buck record. And then we ended up releasing the documentary Games album before we came back with the massacre. Excuse me, excuse me. Yeah, yeah. Give me a, Who is that guy? Hey, yo, check this out, man. We live in Cancun, you feel me? 2005, you watching Access Granted. I got my DJ Who Kid with me. If you see him, he's real icy. He got the Shadyville piece on. He got about half a million on his wrist. <laughs> He's trying to outshine me. How many DJs you know got more than the rappers? That's what you get when you come over to G. So all you rappers out there who ain't got no money, come howl at me. But you gotta howl at me before you howl at the boss. You howl at me, I tell you the cost, and you come and be with the team, and you can floss, kind of like me. You heard? Right now, co collectively, the talent is so much, man. Like, energy is really high over here because you got, it's almost a, uh, a competition, like got a lot of competitive energy over there. And they like, want Mob Deep would go in and make a record, Buck would be in another room. The other day we was we was waiting. Like, Olivia, cause Mace goes in and he don't party. We don't party like that. So he'll he'll be up early. So he'll go in early. Olivia will go in early. Mob Deep and the rest of the crew, they be all they get up at 1.30, 2 o'clock, because they done been out all night. And then they come in at the end of the night and they work in one room and they work in the other one. So we usually book two rooms. Oh, beautiful Olivia right there, right? She's like the light blue, like. Yeah. What's the deal, man? I know you've been waiting for me all day. I'm here now. Cop that album, man. Behind closed doors. Yeah, my Back on me. She always taking my shot, you know what I'm saying? Right now, it look like we're here in uh, Mexican dish. It's like a burrito. I ain't gonna deal with it because I'm gonna have a bubble guts in about five minutes. I'm gonna wait till after we finish, then I'm gonna eat all the Mexican food. So, back from later. What's going on is, right now we're chilling, we out here in uh, Cancun. I'm not sure if it's Cancun in the video, but uh, I'm here in Mexico. Uh, my man over there, you got no shirt on? Y'all probably know him from the wire. You know, Basically, he's getting set up. See, old girl over there, that's my own. And she does that for me, you know, occasionally. She's going to take him back to the hotel and get everything he got and bring it back to me. Basically, that's what's going on. And I'm going to show you and watch. You know what I'm saying? Make sure she does everything she's supposed to do. That's what's going on. So now, right now, I'm getting paid. You know, I'm getting paid to do what you do. See, he's supposed to. The guy behind the camera is supposed to be saying what I'm saying now. So thank you for a good check. Good. So I'm at the VIP table right now. You know what I'm saying? Olivia, Lloyd Banks, DJ Who Kid. This is a um, restaurant scene. We got Hassan Johnson. We Bay. We Bay. What up? Hey, man, the wire. <laughs> we the wire. Playing sparks right there. So um, right now, this is the scene where Hassan gets set up by Alicia. And uh, we are, everybody's watching it go down. You know what I mean? They all sitting here. Everybody's in on it. And they watch it, you know, watch it happen, happen. Oh, man, we got a bunch of stuff tonight. We're going to be inside a restaurant. Uh, we got some driving stuff tonight. We got, like, a whole week's worth of stuff tonight. What night? Olivia, damn. She's had, she probably has their largest profile for an artist that has never released the LP, ever, ever. She's been internationally, anywhere you go, if you go and you mention, say, the first lady of G-Unit, what's her name? 
they'll be able to answer that question in the quiz. Because, you know what I'm saying, if they know G-Unit, they know Olivia. Yeah, what's the deal, Laxis? Granted, I'm here doing a little cameo, watching the little setup go down. You know how we do, uh, Gal, G-Unit, baby. Love you, Olivia! <laughs> As you can see, they love me. <laughs> you know, it's not a bad look. Olivia is like, like in Mason's case, it's the same thing. I'm, I'm diversifying the perception of the company. Do you know, by having something that's not street orientated and aggressive, you know, she's an R&B female solo artist. Um, we were meeting passing um, up at Interscope, you know, back and forth, just high in there, cordial stuff. And um, we were both managed by Chris Lighty of Violator, and that's how we kind of hooked up. Chris got him on the phone with me, and I became the first lady. Hey, check this out. We're going to bring the first lady of G-Unit out here. Yeah! Hey! Up. Give it up, give it up, Olivia! Olivia. Yeah! Hey! <laughs> you, 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 you! Olivia, you were here before, and you had part of the posh. How does it feel to have these casters like your older brothers looking out for you in the industry? This is good. It, this is <laughs> real good. They take very good care of me. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. All right, you, you do. Do you, you want to help us? You want to go to this video yeah, right here? I, I think you know about this. Yeah, I couldn't come out here and not put my video up. Number nine, y'all, for the first time, me featuring Lloyd yeah, 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 Twisted. Yeah, yeah. yeah. See, the Twisted video was just, a video for me to set it up so I could have something to perform with her while we went on the tour. And it worked perfectly, like, because they get a chance to see it, actually, thanks to BET. You know, that huge exposure, and the kids saw it so much that they, they really enjoyed the, her performance, her being there. And she didn't have the traditional R&B setup. Like, for instance, if you've seen Sierra's performance, she, she had four or five dancers with her, and it's, you know, you, you, they have to do other things to entertain them, not let them, they're going to sit on a stool in the middle of the stage and hit, hit notes. So, for her, we performed with her. So there wasn't a whole bunch of dancers, like we just did what we did behind her while she did a performance and it was, it was cool because it's not actually her, time for her to go out on her own. It was cool for us to give that performance, but when she comes back, she can have whatever she want. I don't care if she want a live band, she can have a live band. She want six dances, she can have eight dances. I don't care what she want, whatever they want to pay for. Our record is titled Behind Closed Doors, it's self-explanatory, it's a really sexy record. It's real sensual, that's the word I like to describe it as. It's very intimate, that's why we called it Behind Closed Doors, because those are the kind of things you do behind closed doors. And um, we thought it, were, it was a fitting title. Uh, a lot of heat on there, of course, Dr. Dre came me bangers. Um, Robert Smith, I love him. For most people, they know him as Brandy's ex. But Brandy's my favorite R&B artist, so I was, you know, ecstatic to do a record with him. Um, Walter Millsap, who did So Sexy for me, my next single. So Sexy, she wanted the, the visual to match the content because we were actually in Miami. You know, it made perfect sense for us to shoot it down there. So I said I didn't want to just do a traditional video where they end up on the beach. I went back, I used Marcus Rayboy. Marcus Rayboy is probably one of my favorite um, video directors. He actually shot my first two videos. So it was only fitting that I went back with him to, to do this one. There's a scene that almost, TLC, I think TLC Waterfall, they spent a huge amount of money draining the area, and building a stage and then putting the water back so they could do a performance. I think it was Waterfalls. But we just put like crates in the water. <laughs> Got the same effect going, you know what I mean? But we did it, we made it work. We just went straight for sexy. Like, we, we kept it on the beach. We actually used one of the actors from uh, Barbershop, the series. Well, she didn't really want to pick a love interest. Like, she was like, uh, going through all these guys, so listen, you gotta pick somebody now. For tomorrow, we'd be sitting there, and I have to throw one of the members in on you right quick. You know what I mean? Because if ain't no love interest here, I'm gonna be like, go ahead, Spider. You the love interest, I don't care, we gotta shoot a video today. You know, so I kinda put a little pressure on her. What's the deal, BET? It's your girl Olivia live from Milan, Italy, and I got a little surprise for y'all right now. You know, we kinda on tour. Oh, uh, here we, what you doing? I'm trying to tell them what's going on right going now. On, oh you, boy, I can't get anything done, y'all. I'm trying to tell them what's going on here. The whole crew is bum rushing, y'all. <laughs> Come on, I'm trying to tell y'all that, you know, we're doing this thing. Oh, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> As I was saying, y'all, 
we couldn't be here, you know, to do my new That's video. We live back in Milan, back. Italy. We're going to shoot to So Sexy, y'all, right here. BET got it first, y'all, all right? Yeah, so yeah. check it out. We, we had to go to uh, get a lizard, a specific, you know, a specific type of lizard out there that had all of these colors. It was nice. We got some animals involved in it. You know, I have two brothers of my own, so it's it kind of easy for me to get adjusted to what they do. And I'm used to being around guys all the time anyway. So, um... I mean, it's not really different. They take such good care of me. You know, they spoil me very well. That also helps. But um, they're all such a bunch of great guys. Like, I, I really feel like I'm in high school with just my peoples and we just chilling. It's, it's a, a whole nother experience for me. Like, everything that I've experienced in rap is, a, is the opposite from R&B music. Like, sometimes it may take 30, 40 weeks before the record gets in the position that it takes four weeks on a rap record, you know, but the lifespan of a rap record is probably six to eight weeks before you start to come down off it, you know, and the R&B projects take a lot longer before they start to peak, you know, I've seen on some charts where it take 40 weeks for a record to get there, you just don't turn around on a record, you gotta consistently go with it, but her record is increasing in a great space right now. Wait till you see my crib. See what I'm saying? You usually take, usually have to spend about three months before, you know, in Mexico. I mean, in the States, yeah. So, so your taxes and things don't change. Right. You maintain being a United States citizen, but now, it's cool, you can be back and forth. I'll be back and forth. I'm a United States citizen, this year I gotta spend at least three months in the States to have um, money going into my accounts. Cool. I got money going into my accounts from all over the place in the U.S., so I'm straight. I'm gonna be out here in Mexico when you try to do Cancun. I'm not gonna be in a hotel. You heard me? All right. Hey, it's a pleasure. Come on, you're doing a lot, man. Yeah. How you doing? You've been running around here just, just crazy all day. Say hi to Sharon. She's a school teacher. Out hey, here. how you doing, Sharon? Hi. Ah, <laughs> say, say, uh, 50 cent in Spanish. Uh, 50 centavos. 50 centavos. 50 centavos. Oh, 50 centavos. You heard me? <laughs> The best word I can use to describe 50 is genuine. You know, he's um, genuine in everything he does, whether it be business, music, personal, like he takes care of everybody in this crew. Like working with, you know, a friend that you knew for years, you know what I mean? He got, he got vision. Like for somebody his age and so fresh in the game, to have a big picture like that is incredible. Even though he's my boss, he never communicates with you like a boss. The first conversation I ever had with him, he told me this, remember this, man. Anything I ever say to you, I'm telling it to me first, then to you. So I'm teaching us, we're learning together. And I respected that to the utmost. He really is um, a marketing genius. You know, most people ask you, well, do you think he's um, a better lyricist or he's better at, you know, marketing people? I can't really answer that question because he does both equally well. Some people look at me and they go, he will never take a vacation as he's constantly working. Everything that they see materialized now is things that I worked on last year that are just finally coming to the front, you know what I mean? Like while creating a book, all of these things would be, were happening during that time span that we were creating the screenplay. And now they're both on sale, my book from Pieces to Wait. The stores they don't gotta go get it. I got some questions from, uh, oh, from the boy. internet. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start. Here's Marcus from Randolph, Massachusetts. Wants to know, 50. When you look back on your career so far, is there anything you would have done differently? You might go on. You might go on. Go ahead. Go ahead. Use my. Go ahead. Oh man, I wouldn't change a thing. You know, if it wasn't hard, then it wouldn't be, feel so good right now. <laughs> and I mean, I've I've been having a, a great consistency with the material that I've been releasing and it's, you know, it's been shown by the actual response of the general public. All right, now Keisha from Detroit, Michigan wants to know, Tony, in what ways are you and 50 different and do you guys ever argue? Me and 50 never argue. We different. 50 is like, he's kind of crazy. They don't, for real. <laughs> <laughs> they say I'm crazy. I think 50 crazy. Now, on some serious thing though, 50's like, I'm I'm loud, obnoxious, cocky, uh -huh. but I'm confident. Okay. Fifty is like he's quiet, but he's arrogant in his own way, and he's confident. All right, all right. I think that's what makes us different. That's what makes y'all different. And he's a, isn't he a comedian. 
Huh? He's not com- he's a comedian. Yeah, I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I like to have fun, man. They, they say, you know, Yayo's kind of crazy. I don't got it all, but I like to have fun. Basically, okay. I'm the comedian. I like to have fun, but just don't play with me. I know? hear that. And Olivia, this is a question that, you know, guys want to know. Do guys ever get a chance to talk to you with all these guys around you? Did anybody ever try to approach Olivia with the whole crew around? They try, you know, they'll try to slip numbers to somebody else in the crew. It don't really work because the guys will catch them, you know, and then they got to fall back. And usually they're always around me, so I don't know how we're going to get to do that. What rap does to me, it makes me, um, it makes me more conscious of everything else that's going around. Because when I leave the country, like, I realize that while I'm outside the country and all these other places, that the rappers that I argue with when I'm home, can't go to those places. They don't go to these places. You see what I mean? So it's like, they're actually doing the right thing arguing with me, because they generate the interest of these people out here. I'm making a mistake by arguing with them. So when I commit to being in the, those situations with them from now on, I'm just gonna keep going until they don't even exist anymore. It's gonna pound them to dust. Because you know what I like? Because when they start a little bit, it gets them exposure. And if it stops before I damage them, it helped them. What happens is, because there's no requirements, you got the guy who understands the new slang in the neighborhood. He comes into business and he feels like because he rap and I rap, we're on the exact same level, we're the same people. When I'm making up 70% of the black music at Interscope right now. You know what I mean? Some of them can't even read the contracts they signed. It. Put them as they make them artists on it, on their labels. They just leave that up to their lawyers. Like let him read it. They don't even want to understand what those terms mean. You see what I'm saying? Like they're just like, nah, forget it. Come on, my lawyer got me. So what this mean? Is that good? Okay. <laughs> you know this is really what's going on out there, man. And it's like, and, and because you got to deal with that, there's other things that come with it. You know, I think when between. When Kane was on top, Big Daddy Kane, and when Biggie made it into position, things altered, it extremely changed. Because it went from put a cord in your ass because you played yourself to what was actually going on in Bad Stop. You know what's great about um, every time 50 brings in new members, he always asks all our opinions. Like when I was first coming in, he made sure he asked everybody if everybody was cool with the decision he was going to make. Then as Mom Deep and M.O.P. came in, he did the same thing. Mace came in, he did the same thing. He's not one of those people who just go ahead and do something, which um, is kind of funny to me because he can do whatever he wants, but he takes it upon himself to come to everybody and make sure everybody else is comfortable. It's something that I was prepared for. You know, in the beginning, 50 always prepared us for the, the longevity, so I knew as the more we success, the more you know success comes to us, that eventually it's gonna become a time where the wings have to be spread. In. Everybody changes the environment. You know, you got more deep around. I've been listening to that music since a youngin. You know what I'm saying? I was still in school. You know what I mean? Um, junior high school. Same thing with MOP. And you know, um, it's just a. That's like. It's competition, so almost, you know, it's a funny competition because you put all of us in the studio, it's like, I'm not going to just sit back and, and, and come lackadaisical with a record when I know I got him and Powerhouse, Powerhouse, they've been doing it for so long, you know, so it's actually making the environment a little bit more comfortable. When you see us all on stage, it really is um, amazing to just bring all different types of people together from all different types of hoods, different types of rural areas, and we just mesh so well. Like, you see us together on stage, you know it fits. You know it's not something that somebody just threw together. Now, Tony's album is in stores. The re-release is in stores. So they can look forward to Olivia's new project, Behind Closed Doors. They can look forward to the soundtrack from Give It Your Die Trying To. You know, it'll be, it'll be in stores November 1st. You know, November 9th, my film hits the box office. And November 15th, my video game, Bulletproof, through Universal Indie goes in the stores, and then they can look forward to Mob Deep coming the top of the year. That Blood Money is the title of their new album. And away from that, young Roy Banks. Just this next, this next record, man, I feel like I done been through so much, kind of like I had a freshman year and I skipped my sophomore year, so I, I say I'm good at the junior. I ain't pretty much at the senior yet, but 
at the end of the day, man, I, I, I'm, I'm adding a lot of more elements that you get from Young Buck. You're still getting the lyrical side, the slang side, but I'm keeping it as real life as I've been doing it. And all the situations that I've been going through, believe I'm going to speak on them and give you a direct outlook on what I see. You know what I'm saying? That, uh, man, basically, man, I'm pouring my whole heart into this record, this next album, and they won't really let me name it what I want to. So I'ma just tell you the name, it's called Buck All Y'all. Young Buck's new record is coming in. Traditional MOP with a Twisted G unit. Banks, Bucks, Olivia, 50 Cent, Mace, Mob D, Spider Lope. It's me and my aces and braces with mean mug faces. Only get down on a gang name basis with cases. Try not to leave no traces, but sometimes funk pops in public places. We G, so we spend all the cheese we chases on endo, not on flowers and vases. Break bread with the little homies, tie their laces. Teach them to bust and plus say they graces. Those against us, we erases in broad daylight without 10 paces. I sip cognacs of the finest tastes. I make a war zone out of an oasis. Spit hot rocks like toxic wastes. Feel most LA cops is racist, tenacious when dropping a bomb like Saddam. Get at me, SPI.com, no spaces. Right now, I, I try to listen to the circuit. I'm trying to hear somebody new that's coming up, you know? I'm trying to find me. You know, I'm trying to find the new me. You see, I'm the most heated. I swear the West Coast need it. Blue cleated, undefeated, guaranteed to three-peat it. They can't beat it, get mistreated, dismissed and deleted. Shouldn't have competed, spider so crisp and conceited, I'm weeded. 100 yards of grass and every pass completed. Both the Remy and the neighborhood in me is deep-seated, filthy flesh, so I feed it. I know the word, but don't read it. Tried to sit behind the pulpit and couldn't stay seated. Rap sheeted, cause I cheated. Many bangers got breeded. I hope to make it to them gates, don't even care how I'm greeted. In a pack, I'm elite it, never be impeded. Killing quota, gotta meet it. Born to 97 streeted. Throw a bash, I'ma sweet it. Let them hoes dirty deed it. We deep fleeted, skeeted in they face and watch them eat it. Repeat it until they run down. That's the way we created, exceeded. Went from buckweeded to fucking succeeded. G unit here. Woo! Shit, that was a lot of shit right there. You got a chance to see, right? That's that BET official right there. It's your boy 50 Cent, man. My, my new sneakers, the GX stay there for um, watches. Watch deal from G Unit and Jacob Co. And so many other different opportunities is coming my way they can look at. I see a vitamin water, you know. Also, it's a new company I'm involved in. It's called Gamer Graphics. Yeah, I log on to the internet, www.gamergraphics.com, and check it out. I'd like to thank the entire Interscope staff for all of their support, everybody at RBK, um, specifically Paul Fireman, he writes the checks. Uh, I want to thank everybody at BET for all their love and support, because they showed me so much love up there. Um, and everybody around me, as far as my own staff and G-Unit, everybody I delegate responsibilities to. Everybody from Violator as a management company. And I want to thank my grandparents for raising me. Thank you.